guys. Here we go on my French adventure. Welcome to Lake Beauregard. I'll be honest with you, we got here today, we drove all the way through the night last night. Uh, we haven't had no sleep. My good friend's been awake since 5am yesterday morning. So um, I wasn't going to do an intro until tomorrow, to be quite honest with you. So we've turned up on the lake. There's six of us on here. And we've done a watercraft draw. So I've chosen swim one. Very conveniently. That's a kitchen area there. I'll show you all the facilities that they've got on offer. But the reason I've decided to do my intro right now is I've got my first French carp. Oh yes. Oh yes. So yeah. I'm fishing my right hand rod, I mean swim one, my right hand rod right into that corner there. That's at 19 wraps. And I've got one dead opposite in line with that opening about there. That's at 15 and a half wraps. And I've got one there at 15 wraps. I put two and a half kilo of just boily over each rod. And I thought it was time for a bit of a siesta. As it's been a long day. In the middle of my sleep, my left hand rod's pulled up tight. And I've landed my first one. So, bear with me guys. I'll get it out and we'll weigh it. We'll have a look at it. My first French carp. Yes. Right guys, we're up on the sling, it's weighing in, I have zeroed the sling to the scales, so it's weighing exactly 32 pound, I'm happy with that for my French, first French carp, right, let's get down on the mat, and we'll get some video and pictures, get in, yes boy, can't even put any of these on my Instagram or anything because for some reason I don't get no reception here. I do get reception, just not usable in the France. I've got a UK sim. There she is. Fought like a demon and all. And again. Happy days. We'll quickly spin it around and we'll look at the other side, shall we? The reason I picked this swim is when we've done the watercraft walk around this morning, me and my pal can see a hell of a lot of fizzing. But after I've done my legging around, it all disappeared. Like I said, I wasn't expecting a bite so quick. Here's the other side. My achievement for this trip is a 40 pounder and a grass carp. Let's see if I can do that in seven days. Right guys, I'm gonna get this one back. There we go. Hopefully first one of many. Thank you. Alright. Go and get your big daddy. Yeah! Well, good morning, 
guys. It's going to be the first full day on the lake. I did have one last night. Well, uh, late evening. A 32 pound mirror. But I haven't seen anything at all since. It's been absolutely void of any fish in this in this bay. Apart from a fish that they call the sunfish. I'm guessing they're like little roach, but they're topping everywhere. I've not seen no fizzing or anything. So yeah, not even 24 hours in, and I'm contemplating a move. Unless I see something. Okay guys, for now, I've just reeled the rods in. They're all lent up against the bivvy. I'm going to take you for a quick tour, should we say, before I get stuck into me fishing proper and decide on what I'm doing. So, come on, follow me. So that's the main drive in. The other side of this hedge here is a field and then a road the only sign up there it's like your typical street sign it just says bugard you come down at the end of the hedge there there's a gate that will be open just drive all the way in and then you'll come up into the complex and you'll arrive in the car park area as soon as you get into the car park area, just stop there, get out, you'll be greeted. So, let's have a look and see what the facilities are like. You've got a socialising area. Over there you've got a barbecuing area. We do have some bins here as well. So yeah, we will be making use of this today. And we go into the kitchen. As you can see, it's got everything you'd want. Table, it's got all your saucepans, your sink, cupboards, loads of cupboard space, more saucepans. That is even a slow cooker. Plates and everything that you'd need. All your cutleries in there. everything you could want so we've got a cooker so you can cook all your foods it is electric no electric and gas that's strange mind you we are in france you've got a microwave you've got a toaster kettle everything you could want nice picture up there look a few of the fish in the lake And here we've got a fridge freezer. Bring all your food. So, yeah. So, that is basically the kitchen area, guys. What else could you want? All right, let's go for a little walk just around the back of the kitchen. So literally, come outside. Got water there, that's where I've been filling my water bottle up. Um, unhooking mats and slings are provided, so you don't need to bring any of them. There's a push bike there, got the use of that to ride around the lake. Why you can bring your own landing landing uh, net, um, not your unhooking mat and sling, I don't get that. I don't get that, normally it's everything landing net sling and mat it's a shower that shower is banging a little sink to have a wash with a mirror a 
and then next door to that got a toilet with a sink and then next door to that is a little shed that's got the freezers in it for all your baits more bins that goes obviously back round to the social area around there so like I said this is the main car park area that is the swim that I'm in you got Mark fishing now my best bestie Steve so that's swim one that I'm in then you got swim two and three over there and then this is swim four so as you've probably seen on the video already my swim it's um, just like a big bay it's only three foot deep maximum out there my mate Steve he gets a view all the way up the lake now the design of this lake it's like I'm in a bay and then coming off of that bay is a finger that comes up here and then split up by this island at the end of the island there is where that finger stops on that side but then it continues up this side and I think the biggest in there in here is sort of between 60 to 70 pound got grasses in here there are a few cats in here so yeah you can drive around the whole lake to only to offload your fishing gear after that you must then bring your vehicle back to the car park and leave your vehicle in the car park <coughs> my thoughts are for that that's probably down to fish theft so you can't sneak fish into the vehicle and drive off i don't know but as long as you get your fishing gear to the swim who cares where the vehicle is all right Let's go and decide on what I'm going to do. Right guys, we're on the bike. Going to do a quick lap around the lake. So, from the swim where my mate's fishing, we are now cycling up the left hand side of that swim. That's the water just there, look. There are no swims up this left hand side until you get near the top God, I haven't rode a bike in years so there is a swim here but because of these small dot islands and there are gravel bars that literally run from each one we decided this isn't going to be a swim for any of us we are baiting up swim so as you can see, we have come ahead of a long way and we've still got a hell of a long way to get up to the end of the lake. So let's go. More islands. So this is a swim up here guys, I'm thinking about moving to. Which is one of the main reasons I'm doing this tour now. Because I want to come and have another look at this swim. And this is the swim. All the swims are gravelled. And even though I hate using mallets, I struggled like mad to get pegs in the ground. And I haven't even got a mallet. Yep. You can't see it, I've literally got fizz in there. You can't actually see my mate Steve. I think just to the left hand side of that island, you might just be able to make it out, but there is a swim to the left of here. 
So yeah, guys, I think I'm moving up here. But not everything's a guarantee yet. Right, let's get back on the bike. Guys, if you don't like this view around the lake, you can always just skip it on. It's not a problem. But if you're coming here, it gives you a bit of an insight or thinking about coming here. So here is another swim. I don't know how much of this is open water fishing as there are loads of marginal areas. Look at the wind hacking up here, look. Do I come up here? Jump in this one maybe? Or stick a rod out of this one and fish that other one? Or fish from this one? I really don't know. That is my mate Steve down there. Let's carry on. Back on the bike. There we are, this is the next swim on. Here we go. Do you know what, I'm definitely moving up here because there's six of us on this lake. And we're all down one end. I'm definitely moving up here, definitely. Definitely. They're all up. We're all down. We're all down that end. Why? Why? Right, let's cut this short because I want to get back. So, guys, I'm now on my way back. Um, this is the next swim along from that one. I'm not going to stop at every swim. Now I've got a plan in the head. Yesterday was a rush. Alright guys, let's carry on. I'm just going to turn it off here guys, because we're approaching the other anglers that are with us. I don't know if they want to be on here. So as we look down now, as far as you can see, when it becomes flat calm, that's the bay I'm fishing in. But it's definitely void of any fish down there. I've got to move. Right. Let's move on. So guys, that is the gates to come in. Literally, there's a road there. The village is that way. Got a little up there. Got a pharmacy up there. Um, that is all I managed to see because we did go a little. But yeah, as you can tell, we are now coming back round towards the car park area. Black Burger. So guys, that is the end of the tour. That's my swim. Now put the bike back. I'm gonna get packed up and moved. Well guys, we have moved swims. We are up the top end of the lake now, so this is my view. You've got to be careful because just there, it's a great big bit of granite or something, and I am fishing. So if I get a run already, I've got the boat to go out in. So I've here a boat battle. So I've literally got one down there. I've got. One just there on the corner of that island, and I've got a PVA bag just over here. So all to play for. It's obviously the second night, first full day. So yeah, it's half past eight now. Rods are all out. I've just been down to the kitchen area and cooked myself some dinner. Old chicken stir fry. And you see the rods are out. And 
base camp is just there. No utility front on front, not enough room in the swim. So yeah, let's hope I can get a bite. He says as he gets a liner. All right, hopefully I'll get the camera on soon with another fish. Something a bit bigger than 32 would be nice. As 32 pound is now my PB for France. Well, good morning. Not a lot happened during the night, but as soon as light broke, one of my rods tore off and I managed to lose one. Not feeling too good. Nothing I've done, it was just down to a hook pull, so it was probably not a very good hook hold. So I'm just in the process now, tying up new rig, get that back out. I've seen a lot of activity over my right hand rod as well. Got some bubbling over my middle rod, middle rod. so it's all looking good. Well guys, it's just gone three o'clock in the afternoon and it is Scorchio at the moment. So I've just put a marker float out to the area that I'm fishing. I'm about to go out in the boat and put some bait on. I am going to fill it in. I'm going to put five kilo over it. <laughs> While I'm out here, I can have a good look about as well. Trying to as stealthily as I can, so I don't spook any fish that are out here. Even though I know the area, and I do believe I'm a gravel, I've got my prodding stick with me. Going to double check on that before I put any bait out. That margin to my right hand side, I've seen a lot of fish down there. Just got to be careful of where my marker line is. I can see it, it's just down to my right hand side. Got to be careful of this big plateau. I think. Whoa, don't know if you got that on camera. One just jumped right in front of me. That's silt. 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 So silt. Silt. Okay. Okay. to gravel, silt, gravel, 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 
melhorar o seu seu crango Well, it's Monday evening now, still only the one fish for me. The lake's looking brilliant though. Yeah, not sure on what to do. Not sure on what to do. I've got another new baited spot. Don't know if you can see my pole. So I've got a pole just there. It's only at nine wraps, but I found a little gravel plateau out there. And the other one is 16 wraps, just there. And we've got another one just underneath that hanging branch there. So I know the lad's down on the point just had a screamer. I think it's snagged them up and it's done them on the far margins. So they're on the feed. Let's see what tonight brings. All right. If I don't see you before, I'll give you an update in the morning. Well, guys and girls, good morning. I've lost track now. Is it our third morning? I can't remember. I think it is, isn't it? It's our third morning. I'm not sure. It's Tuesday today, anyway. Tuesday. Um, no fish landed. This left hand rod did go screaming off. The clutch was going on the reel and everything. Come out, lifted up. Nothing on. Lead ain't discharged or anything. So I was fishing out to the, the pole I've got out there. And while I was out here reeling that one in, this left hand rod down the margin, well, it's down, straight down the centre, to be honest, um, same happened with that. And then the clutch was going different, so I pulled up into it. Nothing. No resistance there at all. But the lead had gone. Uh, the one under the bushes, that hasn't done me anything, not even a bleep. So, anyway, I skipped dinner last night, I couldn't be asked to reel the rods in, go down there and start cooking. So it's just gone 11 o'clock now. I'm going to reel in the rods, go down, get some breakfast, grab a shower, get a fresh head on and get back up here. Um, we're out there looking for the gravel patches all the time, but the fish, they're fizzing up in the silt. Because everywhere I've seen them fizzing, I've been out and investigated, and it's silt. So they're obviously feeding on the naturals. The owner did say, pole the baiting, 
on the gravel areas and get them off of the silt, get them off of the naturals, get them onto your bait. I insight that was good advice. But now my thought is, I'm going to go to them, I'm going to fill it in, in the silt. So, I've come up with a rig that help, hopefully help me fish in the silt. Now I know Corda, a fair play to Danny, I know they designed a tubing kit that allows you to fish a helion tubing. So I'll come up with something similar. I can't see any issues with it. But there may be one, I don't know, that I'm overseeing, I don't know. But to me it looks good. It works, it does the job. So I'm going to talk you through what I've come up with. Obviously, tubing. That little bit there. That is just the tip end of a tail rubber. Which is just enough to stop that coming off. But if need be, that will pull off. So that makes that safe, as far as I'm concerned. That's been lead just fell off. Obviously I haven't got any line running through this yet. Let's just put my lid back in. So we've got that bit. No, it's come off again. So that makes that safe. And then at the other end, I've got a little heli buffer bead. Now I've got that through bank tackle and dips. Now, normally it's got an extra bit, comes out to about here. But I couldn't get the tube in to connect. So I cut it right off down to the ball. And then the tube in goes inside there. Now to make that secure, the only thing I need to do with that is super glue that in there. So that's a permanent fixture then. So it is literally just a buffer. So I'm playing the fish. And then for the lead arrangement, everyone would say, well, the only way you can do that is a heli safe. I agree with you. If you want to drop lead on the take, I don't need to drop lead on the take. All I need to worry about is I can drop the lead if I get snapped up. So the lead is there. And all that is, that's just on a quick change. Taking the swivel off of the lead. That fits inside the, the buffer. And that'll be tied to the main line. I know what you're saying, that's permanently fixed. No, it's not. Because if the line was to snap anywhere, the lead would just pull out, taking the line with it. So everything comes apart. Oh, fish has just boshed right over the top of my baited area. So for me, that's what I'm going with. It works. And that, obviously it's on a helicopter. That is what I'm going with in the silt. I'm not going to do it on all three rods. I'm just going to do it on the one rod for now. I've changed the hook pattern as well. Gone over to the Nash Claw. on a Ronnie rig so yeah that's what I'm going with when I come back after breakfast after a shower so it's just gone 11 o'clock now finding these rods and I'm going to get down there guys yeah. right I'll catch you all in a bit well guys it's currently 10 to 4 right now I got back from having something to eat having a shower Probably got back up here about two hours ago. 
I got the rod straight out because our good friend Mark who we're with, he managed a 51 pounder yesterday. It was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, yesterday. Yes, yeah. Time. Yesterday about this time. So I thought, yeah, get up there, get the rods out. It's paid off. So I've just had my first one out of the swim. Currently in the sling. My good mate Steve's come up to give me a hand. Heard me hollering, my first ever boat battle. To be honest with you, it's the first time I've ever fished from a boat. So yeah, let's get this up on the mat and see where it goes. Well, there you go, guys. Not quite my 40. It's about an ounce under 37. But we're going in the right direction. We've gone up five pounds this go. time. <clears throat> Just an ounce or two under 37 pounds. Way up. Lovely. Spin around, have a quick look at the other side. Love it. All right, while we mates here, we get a few water shots as well. Oh yes. Take me time with it. it, might be my last one. But yeah, we're going for a 40. Happy days. Mel's on these are rock hard as well. Go on in. Yes. Bring on the next one. struggling to sleep. Bloody frogs! Jesus, they are loud! Keep getting liners as well. I can't believe how loud them frogs are, man. So I think my buddy Steve might be coming down this end to join me tomorrow. Gonna do a couple of, couple of free nights down here. Been stuck down this end of the lake all on my own. Not that it bothers me. But he ain't had nothing down there. The ants here as well. Jesus Christ, they wear boots. They're massive. All right. Hopefully I'll see you in the morning with a cod. Go finish this fag. Try and get some sleep. I don't think I can. Struggled last night as well. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the morning. Well, good evening. It's Wednesday evening now. I haven't done any videoing today. I've caught up on a few sets, to be honest. And it has been baking bloody hot. So I went for a walk around the lake. I found loads of fish. 
they're all hiding in the snakes under the islands because the un islands are all undercut. They just run up for it. So for the majority of the day, I haven't had the rods out. My good friend Steve, he's moved up here now. He's in the swim to my left. So I've had the rods out now probably about 40 minutes. Started seeing some activity from the carp, but they're way down the end of this channel, beyond my reach. Haven't put any more bait out. I put a whole bucket out last night, so I've not caught off of that, so I've not replaced it. So I'm hoping there is bait still there, otherwise I'll just be fishing singles. But I haven't seen it fizzing up down there or anything, so there's definitely been no carp on the area. So let's see what tonight brings. I'm going to see if I can video the bloody frogs and all. They keep me awake every bloody night. So yeah, with Steve being here, two of us on this bank, makes life a bit easier. We get a scream and run during the night and I've got to go out in the boat. Makes life a lot safer and easier. Right, guys. Like I said, sorry I've not video today, but there's been nothing to record, so. Oh, I did have a cockapoo or something. I don't know, some sort of French looking beaver thing came into the swim, stood on that little island. And just stood there looking at me. Seen loads of lizards, loads of snakes. They got it all going on here. Alright, guys. Hopefully, I can bring you a fish tonight, or if not, in the morning. So, hopefully, I'll see you then. So, here we go into Thursday evening. Two more nights to go. And still only with two fish. A 30, 32 and a 37. I managed to lose one last night. That was a big common. It was a boat battle. Just about I get the, well I got the fish to come up. But before I saw the fish I saw a great big branch on there. So as soon as the branch broke the surface, one big head shake from the fish, it was off. That was a big common. So, here we go again, back into bite time. It seems to be evening once that sun's gone down into the hours of darkness, and then first thing in the morning. Our good friend Mark, who's fishing down in the bays, down the bottom end of this lake, swims two, or three, two and three. He's been having a mid-afternoon. I'll say that, that 37 I had from there, that came at three o'clock in the afternoon. But since that, they haven't been up here in the numbers that they were up here that day. But they do get back up here. When the sun goes down. So with a bit of luck, I won't mess it up again tonight if I get another run. I'll have a fish to bring to you. It'd be nice. I need a 40. I'm not too fussy for getting a glass cup. But a 40. Well, I come to France for was a 40. There are bigger in there, they go up to 58, 60 sort of pounders. So the chances are there. Just need that opportunity. Well, good morning. This is going to be the last full day on the lake. We leave in the morning. 
So, a little recap. The first night, the £32 mirror. Then I decided I didn't like it in that swim. It seemed a bit void of carp. So I moved completely up to the opposite end of the lake, away from all the angling pressure. Then I managed a £37 mirror. I think it was 37 And then the swim went dead. And I thought, do you know what? Just sit tight. They come back. And they did. They come back. Um, I then lost a big common at the net. Down to a hook. Oh, it got me snagged up on something on the bottom. Managed to lift it up off the bottom. Great big sticks come up. Saw the fish. Went to lunge for it with a net. Before I even lunged, it done me. So yeah, pretty wounded on that. As I say, keep plodding on and it will pay off. Well, it paid off. So this morning I've landed a big common. Um, during the night I've landed a, dare I say it, a bloody catfish. So I've got them both in the swing anyway. I'll let you have a look at the catfish. It's only a kitten, tiny little thing. So the common, I'm undecided whether it's a 40 or a 50. I'm not used to judging fish quite that big. But a few 40s. I've never had a 50. So I'm now going to have a cup of coffee anyway. And uh, then we get the, the fish up on the mat. Get them weighed up. I'm not going to bother weighing the cat. Or the kitten, but yeah, definitely the common. So, currently, no rods in the water. So, in that sling there, we have a big common. In that sling there, we have a kitten. So, the big common come on my left hand rod, kitten come on my right, uh, right hand rod, middle rod. I got done is when I wound it in it wasn't where I placed it so yeah the beauty of this place is you can go out in the old rowboat that I've got here and you can place your rigs so everything's fishing super super accurate but the downside is every time you go out there in the boat you are spooking the area so you're gonna have to wait and wait until they come back. So anyway, as Steve joined me up this end of the lake, we decided to put the three rigs out on the, with the, uh, the old bait boat. But we still had to wait. Halfway through the night for the kitten, but we had to wait all the way through the night until the morning before the cobbins took off. Right, Steve's just gone down the bottom to put his handset on charge for his boat because that has decided to give up the ghost. So I'm now going to have a coffee, wait for Steve to come back. When there's two of us, I can deal with this big fish. So guys, until then, I'm going to have a coffee. See you in a bit. Well, here you go. The one you've all been waiting for. Dirty, horrible, slimy, bloody catfish. What should I say? Kitten. There you go. Decided to wake me up at two in the morning for that. And I thought I'd give him a good mate Steve a shout. Get him out of bed as well. He went too impressed. <laughs> right, let's get this back. I want to get the common out. Well, guys, here we go. Just weighed it. 43 pound, two ounce.
first French 40. Look at that. I am buzzing. Yeah, boy. Quickly spin it around and we'll have a look at the other side. It is almost scale perfect. It's got a few marks on it. That was taken on a pea fish hard skins, topped with a little bit of yellow maize, fake maize. I have literally three scoops of maize. Yeah. Right, let's go and get a few in the water with it. It deserves it. I love it. The size of that. Yeah. This is one happy angler. Yeah. Good. See if I can spin it round. That was brave skills. We love it. And thank you. Go on and back to your home. Yes! <laughs> swims again we're back in swim one where we started absolute tip me and Steve we're doubled up in here it's a hell of a lot of fish down here more than what's up the other end a lot of people may think it's mad as I started getting the spot going but I'm only getting one fish there one uh, every other evening or something like that so yeah there's probably 30 odd fish down in this bay now so yeah, this is where I started out. They did leave, they'd come back. So yeah, for the last night, I just doubled up in here. Gonna get everything packed away, literally. Just gonna sleep in the bivvy, on the beds. Everything else will be in the van, ready to go. So guys, hopefully I can bring you a fish or two. Hopefully Steve can bring one to the bank. Be nice. Seven nights without one isn't good. But we'll see. So hopefully guys, we'll see you in a bit. How big is that? Just over the 28. First fish in six nights. And 10 minutes in the right place, and there we have it. I only needed one, and that was the one. Well done, mate. All good. Right, well, 
on the back side. There we go. Oh, <laughs> really? I'm oh, sorry, Chris. I'm thinking of. That's the end of the video. If somebody had said to me at the beginning of the trip, you'll have a 40 pound coming, I'd have ripped their arm off for that. So yeah, well happy I had a 40 pound coming. The swim's all gone, we're all packed up, van's loaded, ready to go. I can highly recommend coming to Lake Brewer Guard. Maybe not in July. The weather was absolutely scorching made the fishing conditions quite difficult. So the best two swims on this trip were swim two and the point swim. I think David up on the point, I think he's had fish every night or evening or early morning. Mark in swim two, he's had quite a few runs, the biggest being just over 50. Um, I was in swim seven up the top end, which is where I had the big common and I'll finish the trip back down in swim one. So yeah, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, please subscribe and share. Right guys, until my next adventure, peace out.